Yo, what's going on guys? This is Bunny Muffins. I got a new video today. We are going to be going over one of the best legendaries in the game. Well, Riot says it's the worst or second worst. So because they do that, we're going to play two of them. So let's just get right into it. We'll see how we get there. I am starting off the game with a Negatron Cloak. Not ideal. And then here we get another Negatron Cloak. Not ideal again. All right, it sucks. You know, you lose Carousel, you get a bad item on the first uh, camp and... All right, not looking so hot so far, but you know, things can always... Recover. You always have to look forward. We sell our Diana. We pick up the two sharpshooters, or three sharpshooters, I should say, and kind of just chill from there. I'm not going to do a sharpshooter game, but sharpshooters are pretty good item holders for the early game for damage units. And we get a sword. All right. That's looking a little awkward. Maybe we could build a Bloodthirster for Slayers. Maybe we could build a Dragon Claw and just say, like, screw it to everything else. But we get an extremely good shop here. I think I end up selling everything and buying the Elise, the Jarvan, and the Rakan because keepers are broken early game. Uh, you, you really want Kennen though, because Kennen is going to be the most damage from the Keepers. Like, Jarvan does some damage too, but not as much. Typically, I find myself picking up a lot of the Chosen Elises, whether they are Cultists or if they are Keepers. I just think it's a really fine unit. Uh, I do need a damage dealer though, so if I had like a 2-star Tristana, a 2-star Nidalee, literally 2-star any damage dealing unit, I'd be in a much better spot. I'd level up and play with that, but we don't have that right now, so we're just going to chill for now. Uh, we also don't have any items, so I don't think I'm going to slam items. I do level up, put in the pike. Maybe he kills one or two things here and there. I think that might have been a mistake, though. Like, four keeper is super strong early, but if I had, like, a sunfire cape, if I had an ionic spark, if I had, like, an actual damage unit that's not pike, I think it would be a lot better to level up there. Uh, but in this case, I think I should have just, like, looking back, I should have just done nothing instead. Um, but yeah, we're able to take this win here because this guy's level three. I guess it actually got pretty close. Do we even take the one? Okay, we didn't even take the one. That's why you need at least like one damage item, you know, not damage item, but like, you know those tanky items that just do a lot of damage over time, stuff like Ionic Spark and Sunfire Cape. We just didn't have that here, so a little, little unfortunate there, but not the end of the world. This turn, I think we just skipped this turn because there's not much good in our shop. We could pick up Tristana 1, but I think Pike 2 actually does more damage. All right, this guy, another Chosen Yasuo. Man, they got two people have Chosen Yasuo. Pike should get an amazing stun here. I'm assuming since we lost to the other, uh, what's it called, Yasuo player, we're going to lose this one as well. But we're able to kill maybe a couple of units. Uh, it's not looking so hot. I feel like I need my Elise to tank first, and I don't, I don't know. It's just looking pretty, pretty screwed from there. All right, so not the best start. We lost twice in a row. One by one unit, one by three units. On average, like a two unit loss. It could be worse, honestly. Do I ditch the pike here? I think I just keep my uh, current board up um, and just go from there. All right, so this this game is looking... This is another Chosen Yasuo, by the way. There are three players with Chosen Yasuo. That's actually kind of nuts. I haven't seen that much of like dudes doing that uh, until this game, honestly. Right, so on this carousel, what do we want? Um, glove isn't so bad. You always want gloves, and I could use like Quicksilver Sash with a glove. Uh, I could build maybe like Hand of Justice later. I, I think I like there wasn't any rods here, so I couldn't build an Ionic Spark or anything like that. Uh, tier for Chalice is okay, but there really isn't anything that great on this carousel. All right, so I also get a Kennen from the carousel, so I'm gonna drop that in. I do have a sword, so I could do something like. Guardian Angel and like a Jeweled Gauntlet Cannon. That's actually a pretty good build. Obviously, Morello is better, but you could do Morello as a third item uh, because he's just going to take all your items. Not much else to say there. All right, so we're against a Cultist guy. We have five Keeper, but like, again, we don't have a two-star damage dealer. It's I don't think we're going to win too many of these games now. I was kind of hoping to natural one of them, but oh, Cannon actually did a ton of work there. So even if we lose this game, I don't think we're going to be that disappointed. I think we actually win this one, man. That Kennen ult was so game-breaking. Remember how in the beginning I told you guys, like, Kennen is a very good damage-dealing unit for the Keeper build? Well, even without any items, he was still able to make it work, which is actually pretty impressive. So we're able to end our loss streak there. Oh, one thing to note, we did level up. I leveled up to play the Kennen. Even though we're playing five Keeper, Keeper is such a good buff early game that I don't mind, like, losing interest to... Not losing interest, like, playing an extra unit... Uh, without any stats or not stats uh, additional traits just because it's like that good uh, so i pick up the kindred here kindred's a better damage unit than the pike and then i'll just drop in spirits so maybe like the attack speed helps my keepers late in the game to just auto more later 
We do have a Jarvan too, which is pretty useful in my opinion. So we get a nice ult there. Kennen cleans up the front line. So like Jarvan takes care of the back line, Kennen takes care of the front line, and we're able to end our loss streak there. So we had a three loss and then like win two into the neutral round. It's, you know, it's not bad. It's not so bad. All right, so at this point in the game, we're not really too sure what direction we're going in. We have a lot of attack damage items, and then we get a gold orb here, and we get a Kale. So it's at this point where I'm like, oh, maybe we could go Kale, because we have a Quicksilver already. As long as we get any buildable Kale comp items, which we do here, which is a Zeke's Herald, uh, it's going to be a decent spot. You know, this isn't the best Kale game, because we don't have any bows, but it's better than what I have right now. So I think I'm going to keep Kale on my bench. If I hit Slayers, I'll go Slayers. And if I hit Kale, I'll go Kale. So we're going to build that Zeke's right away, and we're going to probably build the Quicksilver Sash as well because we're not going Kennen anymore. We don't have a Guardian Angel, we don't have Morella, we don't have any of those pieces. So even though I have a great Keeper start, I got to ditch it for something else. Uh, right now I'm running Cultus. I also put the Zeke's on Kalista. Probably a mistake. I probably should have put it on uh, maybe this Rakan or the Sivir just because... In case I go for Cultus later in the game, like I don't want the Zeke's on the Callista. So in the 5% of games where I'd go something like nine Cultus from the spot, uh, I would not want the Zeke's on her. So that is a mistake for me. Um, I'm also not buffing as many units as I would like, but her as an item holder for the Kale comp, she's probably the best item holder, period. She uses like every single Kale item imaginable. So it's like anything will do. Obviously, Kale doesn't hold the Zeke's Herald. You put that on either Yumi or Kindred, and you guys can check out more info on that on my Kale guide on my website, bunnymuffins.lol. I'll try to leave a link in the description below for more info on that. So we get a Callista here, or a second Callista. You really want, like, the two-star Callista. That's one of the best mid-game boards, so we're definitely going to be buying this. A uh, question is, do we want to sell something to make interest? Probably the Kindred, because we'll end up getting her back later. As you can see here, we get the Galio jump. This guy's going Tristana with Last Whisper and Morello so far. He's probably going into some sort of Slayer build with Morello on Sejuani and Last Whisper on, I guess, anyone. Uh, but we're able to make quick work of him. Like, four Keeper, three Cultist mid game is extremely powerful. As long as you have, like, one damage dealer, which we do have now in the Callista, it's, like, pretty free. And we ended up selling our Kindred uh, in order to make 30 gold for interest. So we're actually in a decent spot, and here it's where I'm like, wow, that is extremely good. Notice how I didn't swap the Kale for the Callista right away. I held on to the Kale because I know I'm going to probably hit the two-star Callista and use that as my mid-game, and I'd rather run that than like a one-star Kale uh, for a couple turns, especially since I don't have any Divine units. I really only had one Executioner in the Kindred, so in this comp right now with the Keepers, I'd rather go for a Cultist build than the Kale build common mistake I see is that once people hit a forecast unit, they sell everything and like pivot right away. You don't need to do that. You could be a little more patient. And in this game, it paid off. Obviously, like you don't always get Kalista 2 this early. Like I'm super happy that I got Kalista 2 and that's not going to happen every game, but it leaves that chance open. And like it keeps my board pretty strong because I still have the three cultist buff with four keeper and keeper and cultist. It's like the one of the most iconic duo traits in the game right now. All right, so on this carousel, we want some Kale items, so I do want a bow. So unfortunately, it's our turn now, and all the bows got taken. We have a Negatron, so we could go for a Tear or a Rod. Uh, I'd prefer a Rod, because Rod is good for Kale, but since we couldn't get that, someone else took it, we go for the Tear to build a Chalice. Okay, we get a Lucky Lantern, we get a Loaded Dice, and a Sword. But those don't really help us that much. I'm going to slam the Chalice of Power, probably put it on Rakan or Sivir. Uh, probably Rakan because he's in the center right now. Um, but ideally, you'd want it on Sivir. If you're running Cultus without Keeper or only like two Keeper instead of four, uh, you generally put the items on, like the aura items on Sivir because she kind of hits the whole team. I'm also going to back him up a little bit um, just so that my frontline tanks more. I want the Elise tanking, not the Fiora. And also, Sivir still reaches my Callista from the spot, so she's perfectly fine one step back. Uh, we actually killed the Aatrox before he ulted, so that's pretty convenient. Yeah, as you guys can see here, this Callista, she's kind of cleaning a lot of stuff up, so that's pretty nice. The opponent's running a Sivir, so we have like kind of similar team comps right now. Um, but we're able to keep our streak from before, so we're actually on a 6 streak right now. So this is a super good spot. I'm loving this, honestly. Okay, on this shop, nothing much to do here, so we're at 63 gold. I'm doing a quick scout. Always be scouting, guys. I'm looking and counting how many people are going to go for Kale. Uh, how many people are going for Slayers, and like pretty much how many people are going for Asol. Those are like the three main comps right now. And if you're going for a Keeper, like you also have to count the Keepers. 
Uh, there seems to be two other Kale players, uh, but we do have one Kale already. We do have a loaded dice, uh, so I still feel comfortable going for it. And then in this next round, we are facing like one of the potential Kale players, so we're just going to make quick work of that here. And all right. Yeah, this guy's pretty weak. He doesn't have a two-star item holder. He's got a one-star item holder. So even though he's got like super strong Braum in the front, it's like, again, easy, easy peasy work there. This Callista has been paying off like extremely well. Gives us a seven streak into neutrals, which gives us three bonus gold right now. So now on Wolf Camp, I'm going to run level seven next turn. So I'm going to sell my chosen unit right now, which is the Elise. And this is because I'm going to be rolling down next turn at least a little bit because I do have a loaded dice. I do have a Kale already, so I might do the transition. I'm not 100% sure. I don't have to do it right away, but I want to keep the option open, which is why I sell the Elise. There's definitely mu a much better Chosen I can use. I could just use a temporary Chosen on the next level as well. It uh, doesn't have to be anything like too perfect or too crazy. We get another belt and another tier. I mean, that's another that's another Zeke's, right? So we could have double Zeke's. And honestly, whenever you play Kale, the aura items are like one of the most important things. A lot of people think you need perfect Kale items. And yes, it's true. Perfect Kale items is very, very nice. I'm never going to complain about having perfect Kale items. But it's not that great unless you also have aura items on her as well. If not, she's not going to do enough damage. For example, perfect item Kale is like RFC, Rageblade, and Quicksilver. But I've gone over this before for you guys. In case you guys are new, Kale... With those items two of them are kind of like utility items the quicksilver and the rfc so she actually doesn't have that much damage it's really only rageblade which is giving her damage which is oftentimes not enough which is why you complement her with the zeke's herald and the chalice of power uh, so if that tip helped you out and if you are new to the channel go ahead like and subscribe down below and yeah we'll go from there uh, we hit this cultist callista so here's what i was saying before like maybe we made a mistake Honestly, we don't have the best Callista items anyways, so we are not going to be taking this. Uh, but if we did, if we had like Runons, if we had RFC, if we had Rageblade already, like yeah, we'd play this Callista and go for three star Callista with like six or nine Cultists. Uh, but since we don't have that, I'm going to pass on her for now and uh, probably commit to Kale at this point here by skipping this Chosen. I could have played this unit for like maybe one turn, play like six Cultists plus three or, or two or two to four keeper. And maybe that could have been worth it. Uh, I'm not really too sure, but it kind of kills my chances for rolling for a chosen later. So like chosens right now that could be helpful that I could possibly hit is like Kindred Chosen, uh, Yumi Chosen is decent, or like one of the Aurelia Chosens, and obviously Kale Chosen, but like I can't be hoping for Kale Chosen on level seven. Um, so I kind of just didn't buy it for that reason there. So we hit another Zaya here. That's really good. That means Executioner. Since we have two Zayas right now, Executioner chosen would be incredible because four Executioner is incredibly strong. Uh, we hit, we're facing the Yasuo player right now. Uh, unlucky he's playing Kale as well. Kale's not really that great in Duelists. She's great in her own comps plus Duelist Spatula, but in like a Yasuo comp, I really don't like Kale. I feel like you have like too much damage already, so you kind of want more utility. Uh, but he's able to beat us here barely like all his units are one health it's actually kind of unfortunate so we're on a three loss streak right now we really need to turn that around and we'll probably do that next turn by leveling up to level eight we didn't roll much at level seven and that's because we felt pretty fine we were on like a seven game win streak but now since we lost a couple of rounds we do want to end up rolling down uh, so what i want here is probably the bow uh bow if you're going Kale, you, you want like at least one of them, if not more. So that's just a no-brainer there. We, were, we weren't able to get great items on the previous carousels because we were wind streaking too hard. Uh, but luckily this round, we're able to complete our items. Okay, so now for the roll down, I'm going to sell the Shen. I'm going to sell some of the other units and hopefully find my comp. I did forget to level up here after one roll, but realized it in the middle. And now we start the roll down. Yumi's very important for Spirit and Mystic. And then I like running Shen for Adepts. And there's our Zaya. I'm going to skip this Trindamir. We just don't have the right items for him. Uh, skip this Shivana. Get the Yumi. And we really are looking for... Ooh, nice. Lee Sin's right there. So, obviously, we want to take out both Kennen and the Sivir because they're not doing much right now. Uh, but I ran out of time. I'd put in Yumi and Shen instead because that gives me Spirit and Mystic, which is pretty effective. And I take out Kennen, so I keep the ninja buff. So that's what I would do if I had more time. But I ran out of time here. Time is a very important factor in TFT. 
And this guy's running Kale as an item holder. He's got two Kales, even though he has Last Whisper. He's kind of griefing the game, honestly. Because there are a lot of Kale players. And Kale <laughs> does not work with these items. By the way, if this was like Vanguard Sejuani, I would have taken it, but it was not. Uh, Kindred 2, pretty nice. I'm going to keep rolling here because I'm missing a few more units. Uh, obviously, I want the... What's her name? Yumi in, and then I think I take out the Kennen for the Shen. Um, and then I'm looking for one other guy there. I guess the ninja buff isn't like that important, but maybe I should take out Kennen for someone else. Maybe like, yeah, Jax or something like that. Um, and then here I should backline my units and then put all the buff items on Kindred. The debate between Yumi or Kindred holding all the aura items is literally just whoever's two star. And in this case, Kindred's two star, so I'm gonna put that on her. If Yumi was two star, I'd put it on Yumi. Um, yeah, it just really depends on the level and not too much else. Uh, so we're getting smashed by Aurelian Soul. Aurelian Soul is like a natural counter to the Kale comp because Kale stands in the back and she is very squishy and Aesol hits the squishy backline units. So he just one taps her and goes next. So we lost five in a row. Not ideal. We do have a lose streak. So I guess we get like a little bit of gold, but honestly, it's not worth losing. What did we lose? Like 40 health there. Luckily, our losses weren't that big, so we're still in a fine spot here. Off this carousel, we get a sword, not carousel, the neutral round. We get a bow and another bow, so that is pretty good, pretty good. Anytime you get bows on Kale, you're pretty happy about it. This Shen's very interesting. I took it at first, and then I realized, like, I have a lot of gold to roll, so there's a very high chance I could hit a better Chosen. And there we go right there. We get another Kale there, too, so, like, even though Kale Executioner Chosen is obviously the best thing to hit there, we had a lot more gold to find the other Kales. I think we had like 30 or 40 gold to roll down. Um, and we hit like another Kale in the shop as well. But obviously I'm gonna cop that Kale right away because that is the best thing to get. Uh, RFC for sure. And then for this last item, I wasn't really too sure whether Static Shiv or Giant Slayer was the best. I need a scout before I build a Giant Slayer and I failed to do that. So that is a big mistake there. Uh, whenever you want to build Giant Slayer, you have to scout uh, because it's like, <laughs> pretty useless against certain teams so you want to make sure that there are a lot of teams that it is effective against teams that it is effective against are teams such as warlords uh, anything with a three star front line like or like multiple three star front lines and then stuff like brawlers obviously and then if people are playing mage swain giant slayer is a great option as well all right so i'm kind of stacking all my units in the back we picked up an orn and since i feel pretty comfortable with this kale two star uh, I'm going to run Orn for a while. Orn is a very greedy unit, and you should only be playing it if you, like, know you're not going to lose within the next four rounds. Uh, like, I say, I think if you could go, like, 50-50 in your next four rounds, like, go two and two, go ahead and play Orn. Uh, or use, like, the neutral round as one of the rounds as well, because that one also counts. So if you go, like, one and two, maybe that's fine. I don't like taking more than two losses when I play Orn, because you're risking a lot for that. Uh, and I just prefer to, you know, not lose 50 health because I played an Orn, you know? Um, but luckily we won the first round, so we just got three more turns to go. Uh, you notice I might be holding my gold right now. I'm not really too sure if that was correct. I don't know if I should be rolling down for the legendaries at level 8 or if I should try to go level 9. It's really debatable. I just felt like since I was so strong, I didn't need to roll at all. But Maybe I should have rolled down here because I, I am getting kind of low. 39 health isn't the healthiest thing in the world, even though we are in second place. Uh, it just happens that this lobby is super close. Look, everyone's there's seven people in the game still, and it's like getting it's it's not comfortable, you know? So this is kind of why I wanted to build Static Shiv before. You notice there's a Jeweled Gauntlet there, which is a Kale item. I could have greeted this whole time and tried to get a better Kale item than Giant Slayer. And then Static Shiv also lowers magic resistance of other people's teams. But luckily, like, I guess not luckily, but unfortunately, we didn't get the Jeweled Gauntlet. So I just grab a tank item. I want to put it on my Lee Sin. Again, Riot thinks that Lee Sin is like the second worst champion in the game, according to the data. But I think Lee Sin's actually really, really good because Lee Sin just kills a unit. Remember Urgot from last set? Like, Urgot just kills a unit randomly. And that is kind of never a bad thing to do, you know, for just like a random unit you put in. Luckily, in this comp, we also have Divine, so he's very helpful for that too. All right, so we're facing an Aesol here. This guy's got double Zeke, so that's actually kind of scary. That means his Aesol is going to cast pretty often. Oh, and Lee Sin's also very useful against all the Swain players. But you see here, like, Aesol just deletes my Kale, like, in one shot. 
and it's just a horrible matchup. So we lost one round. We were at 39, so we took 15 life from one loss. That's actually a lot. Maybe I shouldn't have played Orn. I just need to wait one more turn for him. But since I, since you guys see I have 72 gold here, like it's probably a go level nine angle. Like maybe I could have rolled for other units, but I didn't have any pairs on my bench. If I had a pair of Shens, maybe like a pair of Azirs or a pair of Lee Sins, maybe I should have rolled. But since I didn't have that at all, uh, that was kind of my decision point for like not rolling for anything else. There's also like a ton of other Kale players, so they're probably all looking for the same units and may already have them on their bench. If I wait a tiny bit, they might get knocked out. So we get a collector from the Orn. Uh, so I just item remove my Kale and put the collector on her. And then I just put my Giant Slayer on uh, just literally anyone else. It doesn't matter. I drop it on Zaya for now, but again, it, it really doesn't matter. I also add Aurelia to my team instead of the Orn, and that is just to give adepts from shen and then after that next turn i'll drop in jacks for four divine another thing you could do is go for four mystic so if there are a lot of aurelian soul players you could go for four mystic at level nine um, by taking out jacks and aurelia um, but right now i kind of like where we're at here and i'm just going to do a roll down and hopefully hit the rest of my team because we are severely lacking certain upgrades namely the yumi the shen your name is pretty interesting uh, but I don't know if we have room for him in this game. Maybe we do. Uh, but we really need an upgrade. Like, a, what's it called? There's a Sejuani. Um, but I'm not playing her this game because I don't really need Vanguards right now. And then here I sell the Janus because I hit the Yone. So I think Yone might be better than the 4 Mystic. But I could be wrong. Maybe 4 Mystic's better. I'm not really too sure. Um, just because there is an Aesol player that's killing me. There is other Kale players. Ah, uh, yeah, maybe I should have played 4 Mystic this game. Since I didn't have anyone else upgraded. It's tough to say, tough to say. So this is a Kale Mirror matchup. Whoever has RFC normally wins this, but um, we both have RFC. So I guess we won because the rest of our team was better, I'm guessing. I'm not really too sure. We do have the 4 Executioner bonus, which is actually really huge. Uh, and then we're going to roll down again. I really want Lee Sin 2 or something like that. Uh, we can't go for Kale 3 this game, so I'm going to skip that. We end up hitting a lot of Talons for some reason. Um... We have a bunch of Zayas. Okay, there's the Yumi finally. We finally rolled and hit an upgrade. There's two Azirs. I sell the Olaf, roll some more. And we don't really hit anything that useful. I guess I skipped over a Jax, but is Jax really needed? Like, I feel like Yone is better for three Adepts because no one has Quicksilver apart from that Kale player. So Adept's actually really strong. Ah, I lied. This Tristana has Adept. Maybe I should have played the other guy then, or four Divine then over the Yone. I'm not really too sure. Yone does reduce magic resistances, so he's not completely useless. But let's see how close this game is. We are at 24 health, and ooh, Collector's really spicy. It's getting us a lot of gold, but this Tristana finishes us off, so we're at 14 health right now. That is not where you want to be, but at least we're top four, you know? Uh, I'd say, like, this game started off pretty well because, okay, there we use the loaded dice on the Yone. Uh, don't hit the Aurelia a little unlucky, but using dice on Yone pretty much guarantees adept units and all my adept units were one star, so that's why I use it on him. Uh, so back to what I was saying before, like in terms of outcomes for this game or like expected outcomes, we had a pretty good early game. We had the Callista two star and all that. Uh, we do have the chosen Kale in the mid game, uh, but I feel like not everything fell into place afterwards. Like we didn't natural any upgrades after the Callista. Uh, we really had to roll a lot for everything else. For example, like Yumi 2-star, we still don't have Aurelia 2-star, we just got Shen 2-star, we have Lee Sin 1-star, Yone 1-star. Like, our whole team is 1-star, except for like 3 or 4 units. Uh, luckily, we have the 3 or 4 units that really matter. Um, but until last turn, we kind of had a very, very weak team, so... <sighs> like, a lot of times you natural more upgrades than what I had here. Maybe I should have been more flexible, maybe I should have played the Sejuani instead. Um, and do something like a Sejuani Aatrox, because there is a Tristana player, so it could have had some value there. Uh, on this carousel, I think it's just a Zephyr, because Zephyr's... Well, it's really good late game, and I don't want to get Zephyr'd. Um, so I could Zephyr the Aurelian Soul, probably, or just a tank unit up for the Tristana player. We're going to roll down some more. Nothing nothing else much here. We have like 10 pairs on our bench. Uh, yeah, it's, just, <laughs> it's just keep pressing D and pray. We get the Azir, which is... It's actually a decent upgrade. The worst upgrade would have been the Aurelia. The best one would be the Lee Sin. Second best, I think, would be the Yone. Uh, yeah, but obviously any level 2 legendary is going to be pretty fine to have. Uh, so I moved my Kale to the side a little bit um, just to kind of dodge some of the 
abilities from the Aurelian Soul. Um, but maybe I should have kept her in the center because she might still get hit here. I think it's Aesol was on the top right though. I don't really remember. Um, but this is the Tristana player. Notice how he puts his Tristana in the middle. That's kind of something that I was aiming to do as well just because it dodges the, uh, the spellcasters because like he gets you. But he got knocked out so we don't have to worry about that anymore. This means in the 1v1 we have a huge advantage over the Tristana player. A lot of people are telling me like what counters Tristana. Well RFC um, Kale is one of the counters because... You have so much larger range over the Tristana that at the end of the fight, she has to walk all the way across the map in order to, to reach your Kale. And by the time she does that, Kale just like kills the whole team. So you'll see in this fight, hopefully, uh, what goes on there. So I'm going to move my Lee Sin a bit. I want to hit the Yone, but I think I'm too slow. Oh, no, I get the swap buff there. So I always do the last second swaps and oh, he moved his Yone as well. Maybe we still hit him, though. Yeah, we're still able to hit him, which is really nice. Uh, let's see what happens here. He's got Vanguard Yone, which is kind of... It's actually kind of good, you know? Um, but we kind of slaughter him here. But you'll see right now, like, even if the Tristana... Look at her. She's, like, walking to my Kale. My Kale got, like, three or four autos by the time she got there uh, before she could even attack my Kale, and we're able to win like that. That's why I say it's, like, a really good matchup because, uh, I mean, he's pretty strong. He's got, like, three stars of everything. He's got a two-star Legendary... He's got a decent front line, and we're able to beat him there without anything like that crazy on our board, you know? Um, and like the three-star Tristana build is actually pretty strong. So against this guy, I probably should have played Vanguards as well, so I might have been a mistake not picking up the Sejuani, uh, because doing some sort of Vanguard build is pretty good when they don't have any QSSs. But I pick up the Lee Sin. I'm going to keep rolling and see what I hit, and we get the Aurelia, which is nice. I think I just grabbed that. Um... Or actually, I don't. I guess I'm looking for Yone or Lee Sin even more. Oh, yeah, I remember what happened at this point. I planned on running, like, the extra Lee Sin over the Aurelia anyways. And then we grab the <laughs> the other Lee Sin, we lock it him, and we put all the tears on him. Uh, not lock it, we Nico him and put all the tears on him. I forgot that we only had three divines, so Aurelia was effectively not providing that much value. And, yeah, Lee Sin, apparently Riot thinks it is the second worst legendary in the game, according to the data. But he just kicks people off the board, and even though this game, he didn't have any high priority targets to kick off, uh, it's still really nice to have because he's always going to go at least one for one for other units, and namely their tank line oftentimes, and that's just never a bad thing, you know? <laughs> and frankly, I don't even have blue buff on my Lee Sin. I just have tank items, and the other guy has a chalice and a tier. But you'll see something that I do here, which is pretty interesting. So I know he has a three-star Diana that's going to jump to my back line. So I'm going to drop my Lee Sin to the back line as well to kind of counter it. And um, you'll see here, he's probably going to position to the same side as me. And as I said before, that's good on him because I always want to be opposite side because I have the RFC. But I was more focused on kicking this Diana, so I drop her down here. She jumps to the back line, and then look at this. Lee Sin is already targeting her, kicks her off. I know Kale was targeting her anyways, but had Kale targeted someone in the front line, um, the Diana would have been kicked off for free. And like, yeah, kicks are OP. And imagine, like, we face a Swain that's really big. Lee Sin just kicks him off. Like, one-star Lee Sin can do the same thing, too. So, uh, Lee Sin's amazing. Obviously, like, Kale is the main carry, but oftentimes in the super late game, it's going to be Lee Sin against certain units, like the three-star Annies, the two-star Swains, the three-star Kennens. He's really, like, the icing on the cake, and Kale's more for the cleanup. Um, but, yeah, thanks so much for watching, guys, uh, and I will see you guys later.